Alright, the title of my sermon will be, Do Not Be Ashamed. I'll be speaking from Romans 1, 16 through 17. So say you are driving. You're on the highway with your friend, and it is beautiful outside. Your day is going perfectly fine until you're both caught off guard as you read one of the billboards on I-480. It reads, and I quote, The Browns are going to be the toughest team in the field this year. Buy your tickets now! End quote. <laughs> For the slightest moment, you get excited, but then you remember that it's the Browns. <laughs> your excitement quickly turns to anger as you know this will never happen. Now, for the last few seconds, your focus has been on the billboard and not the road. As you and your friend turn your attention back in the road, you realize that the car in front of you has had their brakes on for the past few seconds. It seems impossible to stop, but you slam on your brakes anyways. Now, let's talk about those brakes. They squeal like there's no tomorrow. Oftentimes, it can be embarrassing even to stop. Oh, don't get me wrong, those brakes were fantastic. It's just sometimes... People in other cars may be offended by the squeal. Let's get back to the story. It's incredible. You managed to stop. Luckily, the brakes that were often embarrassing at times saved you and your buddy's life. It wasn't pretty as it squealed like crazy, but it did the job like a champ. At this moment, you would not be ashamed of those brakes. Why? Because those brakes saved your life. There's no reason to be ashamed about it. Now let's translate that to scripture. In Romans 1.16, it says... I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. So we need to figure out Paul's reasoning behind writing this. See, Paul, he's writing to the church in Rome, letting them know that he is not ashamed of the gospel. They must have been going through times where they must have been ashamed when people are persecuting them or being offended by the gospel. You see, the gospel is not just any story. It is God's holy word, which is still alive and applicable today. The gospel still has the power to save and transform lives. Like Paul, we should not be ashamed of the gospel. So say you're hanging out with a group of friends. All is going well until the Bible comes up in the conversation in a not-so-pleasant way. You want to be friends with these people, but you don't want to compromise your faith. You have a choice to join in agreement with them as if you're not one of those Jesus freaks, or you could let them know that you believe in Jesus and possibly use this as an opportunity to turn around the conversation and share your gospel with them. See, when you agree with them, you're being ashamed. You're, being, you're, you're hiding what the gospel is and what you really are as a Christian. But when you, when you follow God and you use the examples God can take the opportunities and turn them around and use it for his glory. So you'd be not ashamed. So what is the gospel, you may be asking. The gospel is a love story for what God has done for us. God sent his son Jesus to be our ultimate sacrifice and to be the savior of the world. Our job is to spread the story of Jesus. When we do that, we could end up saving someone else's soul. So why is salvation so important? The salvation is vital. When someone is saved through Christ Jesus, they are saved from eternal hell. There they would have spent the rest of eternity in torment. They now live with Christ in them as, as God has intended and will one day inherit the kingdom of God. And you may be wondering, who can be saved? Salvation is for everyone. Every human being can be saved. The salvation came first for the Jew because they were God's chosen people. But now all Gentiles may choose to receive the gift of salvation. So you know the gospel has the power to save lives, but you may be wondering, what can the gospel still do for me personally? We continue to read in the next verse in Romans 1.17. It reads, For in the gospel a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteousness will live by faith. So what does this mean? Since the gospel reveals God's righteousness, it becomes a model for our lives. The gospel has the power to help us live a righteous life. And you may be asking yourself, why is this righteousness so important? 
Well, Matthew 5.20, it says, For I tell you, that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisee and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Without righteousness, we cannot be good enough to get into heaven. Righteousness is not something that we automatically have or earn through works. We need righteousness to be saved. And God is our only source of righteousness. In Acts 13, 47, it says, For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When we live a righteous life and not being ashamed, we become a light to the world. We carry the light of the gospel. Luke 11.33 says, No one lights a lamp and puts it in a place where it will be hidden, or under a bowl. Instead, he puts it on a stand, so that those who come in may see the light. See, so when you are hanging out with your friends, do not be ashamed of the gospel. You never know when God can turn the situation around. Or like the breaks, they may be offended some people, but save you and your friend's life. The truth is, the gospel is offensive to some people, but we don't have to be ashamed about it, because the gospel, even more so, can save souls. So I leave you with this. Do not hide the light of Jesus inside of you. Let it shine for all to see. I challenge you today to not be ashamed of what God has done, for this is the gospel.